Hi there, premium fans. TR Tony here, sat in the office early in the week and um, just wanted to share with you something that my son James, uh, also known as Trumpet Pilot, now Sparky Bob, uh, gave to me for my birthday. Actually, it was um, a couple of weeks ago, back in um, September, and he'd been to a jumble sale or some kind of um, kind of uh, you know bargain basement shop and had come across this Practical Classics magazine from January. 1984 and I think I was about 23 when this first came out priced at 85p um, he picked it obviously because uh, it had a Triumph stag on the front and there were some top tips in there about how to buy a stag what to watch for that kind of thing so um, I've been reading it over the last couple of weeks just um, as you do quietly uh, minding my own business it's just really interesting seeing the the styling and the uh, uh, the dating of this really almost 40 years old pretty much now and um, how things were affecting life back then. They're talking about the threat to driver safety of seatbelts um, and in particular having read this article it was really interesting actually that uh, at that time lots of people were getting old um, seatbelts from cars on scrap yards and putting them into their classics which uh, was very dangerous because it says here automatic belts are designed to emergency lock in seven one thousandths of a second and to restrain tow uh, loads of a hundred one and a half tons and um, used belts whilst appearing sound may not actually be able to meet the current MOT rules and regs um, if they've been sat around the yard rotting in the open weather it doesn't take much imagination to work out why they were suggesting then to not use them in your classic car um, bear in mind this is 1984 so some of the rules and regs from the late 70s uh, would still be in play um, I can't remember actually when the seatbelt law came in um, probably late 70s early 80s so we're not far off so at this time it would have been a big retro thing but just I thought I'd share this magazine with you um, I'm sure you can get these online on eBay or somewhere like that uh, but uh, it is off its time I had a good flick through uh, interesting here some articles on uh, how to fix your Rover P4 brakes there's a VW Cabriolet rebuild there um, some things about some steam engines going on various spares and whatever uh, article about chrome plating and when I read this I was kind of quite interested health and safety being as it is now compared to then this guy here working with some horrible fumes in chrome all he's got is a pair of gloves as a uh, safety feature there's no mask or um, uh, clean air breathing and you can see here just how uh, uh, cavalier possibly working practices were back then no thought for what you might be breathing in in terms of toxic fumes and everything else um, and, and so on and so forth. So lots lots within the magazine. Uh, some cars stories there. You've got Terry's tips about how to avoid challenges and problems with your car. I'm kind of flipping through here because, again, there's lots in here that you could read through. I just love some of these adverts, you know, so that uh, are of their time. A lot of it are black and white rather than colour, reflecting the era that this was produced. And then on page 71, this is it. This is the how to go about buying a Triumph Stag. And I won't read it all for you, uh, but interestingly enough, they were talking about uh, the fact that Triumph sold 46,000 Stags in seven years from 1970 and were struggling to convince even the, those few buyers that this really was Britain's BMW beta and that the car's appalling reliability um, was rather exaggerated. But, you know, dead Stags at this time uh, were happening. They were kind of... Um, uh, talking about the fact that it, uh, it's kind of a, uh, asking prices for mid examples rival the average e-type listing at that particular point in time and um, obviously waxing lyrical about the various challenges Tony Hart I believe of Hart Racing at the time was selected as the guru and I know of that name and I know he's um, uh, you know a very well-known name in the Triumph Stag community and it says here in fact we had the problem with UES um, uh, the Red Barrow, uh, one of the biggest unseen problems it talked about was the suspension and steering and the McPherson struck at the front end and ours had actually corroded at the top of the posts when um, we had ours looked at a few months ago. Got it all changed over and done by a local uh, garage but it did cost a couple of three grand, don't tell the missus. Uh, interesting here um, and so it was talking all the various kind of things that you've got to watch out for engine and gearbox uh, if it's well maintained then that's great look at the engine over and make sure it's okay usual rust spots it was talking about in the sills and um, on the leading edge of the hardtop which I'm sure we're all very familiar with I am with mine 
and um, it's kind of hanging on in there but uh, trying to avoid doing a major job to to repair it um bits about the rear end of the uh kind of hard top as well and um yeah just some really interesting things about what to pay for a 1971 car in average condition bear in mind this was 1984 1500 to 2000 pounds but a nice one could really realize as much as 3000 pounds um and uh, a run-of-the-mill 1976 on the other hand might go for only two and a half really min low mileage uh, seven and a half thousand wouldn't it be good if you could buy a really mint triumph stag for that kind of money now um, you can buy a triumph stag for about that money now about seven and a half but really uh you know you don't really know what you're getting it's probably got an inline six and uh, on that subject of engines in fact heart racing were talking then about i would not thought about this before we, we've all heard about the rover v8 upgrade and how that many stags did actually have that conversion particularly in the 80s because of the unreliability of the stag uh, triumph engine but um, what i hadn't realized and i discovered by reading this that if uh, the rover or ford engines at that time have been fitted then the suspension height and damper rates may need to be altered um, and so does the brake bias because if you converted your car and it breaks down a it talks about what spares um, are you looking for but b uh, the big thing for me was that the suspension and road holding is affected because the front sits an inch or so higher uh, and tends to lift, therefore making the car lethal at motorway speeds. I hadn't even thought of that before, but um, just discovered that by reading this uh, through. So just something to bear in mind, I suppose, if you have got a V8 Rover in your car, have you had the suspension looked at and adjusted and made sure that it sits right on the road? Uh, we've got some uh, engine and performance figures here, which I'm sure you can speed read, but um, yeah, stroke 95 mil. 145 brake horsepower at 5,500, 0 to 50 in 8.1 seconds, fuel consumption 20 miles per gallon, maximum speed, I can't imagine doing 115 miles an hour in my stag, but uh, that apparently was the quoted um, maximum speed, which um, I think I'd be terrified if I did that, I'm doing 80 in mine these days, and that's enough, the windows are flapping and everything's um, everything's uh, quite... Um, Quite enough at that speed, thank you very much. <laughs> no faster. And um, again, just finishes off with various things about the interior, how it is actually a four-seater. The access is actually quite good. And um, but once you're there, the legroom can be a little bit restricted. And of course, what to look for here um, in terms of bypass hoses and uh, various kind of Mark I, Mark II kind of derivatives, as, as we all know. And as we know as well, Stag Owners Club was taking off and uh, there were other kind of more regional ones as well as whether well other suppliers around the country who would be able to help you on your way and usual things in the back here i guess moving on to various prices which you can look you can look through at your leisure and uh, cars for sale i'm sure classified classics uh, note without too many photos here it's right for test mark ii here um 750 quid back then and it's all relative i know this was nearly 40 years ago but uh, i just thought i'd share with you this week uh the video this week on the premium uh platform just the interesting um, history of this magazine and how that 40 years seems to have flown by really quickly and uh they're contained within that mag is um all you need to know about your triumph stags and uh a few surprises as well and you know i've been dealing with stags for probably four or five years now and i didn't think about the effect of a, a rover v8 uh, might have on the um, way that the car sits on the road and so that's a really top tip to watch out for and uh, yeah so i just thought i'd just share that with you thanks for watching guys hope you're having a great week wherever you are and we'll see you online on ari the stag premium channel very soon all the best see ya bye